All right, a couple of drywall tips. This is gonna be a real easy one, small bathroom. We're doing a towel wainscoting, so there's no need the mud underneath of where the towel's gonna go. First thing though, this is a nice little tool here. This is, uh, it can hold your paper tape. So you just slide that in and it, hold, it has a nice little uh, hook on it that can connect to your belt. So it makes it nice to be able to uh, connect this and be able to slide your tape out. So if you're doing a lot of taping, this would be a, a, a good tool to, to deal with because it keeps your hands free. You don't have to touch the paper. You just stick it on your boat, belt loop and you can pull it out. So pretty nice. Um, definitely just like the small things that make it easier. Uh, but a couple of tips here. One, when you get your first bucket, when you get your bucket of mud out, you want to add a little bit of water to it. You want to thin it down a little bit and you want to mix it. This is going to help get the air bubbles out of it and give it a little bit of a nicer smooth texture. So I usually do about two sponge worths of water and then you want to use a mixing paddle for this and then just mix this up. For taping, you can use your, either a six inch knife or a four inch knife or the combination of the both, really up to you. Uh, you're really not applying too much mud. You're just trying to get enough tape, tape or enough mud underneath the tape to make sure you're embedding it. So you wanna do your flats first and then do your corners. Now this particular situation, I'm gonna be down by 48 inches. This is actually a pretty tall room. It's like eight foot six. So my uh, seams are a little bit higher than normal. A lot of times, um, I mean, you still end up having to finish this most of the time if you're doing a wainscoting at 48 inches because you still have this bevel here that you're gonna have to mud in so that it looks right. But uh, yeah, do your flats first and then do your corners and just make sure that you have plenty of mud underneath of that tape. That's the biggest key at the, at the taping portion of this is making sure you have enough mud to prevent any of the paper from lifting. So this is just a matter of getting a nice coat. This is purple board. This is a moisture resistant. This is kind of like a similar to the green board. It's just purple. So as long as you don't see any of the purple, you should be good. I'm gonna do this same at the same time here. So then you're just basically taking it all off completely. So this is kind of this is kind of your practice area is on the on the first coat. Get you used to these trials. And then just try to keep this as flat as you can. Get all those flats done first. Okay, so I'm just doing this like little pitter pattern type of deal just to get the mud on the ceiling. smoothing it out. And then if you start from the center, work your out way out, that'll make it easier to keep it from punching up on you. So about a corner amount of mud and just glide that on the corner.
completely coating that corner. And again, don't worry about how much you're really putting on there because you're basically going to be scraping it all out. You just don't want to see any of the purple. And just kind of push it into that corner. And just take the apply it on one side. Just push that in tightly into the corner and remove all the excess. I usually like to do the ceiling first. It feels like a little bit easier sometimes. You don't really have to tape where the tile is. And honestly, I prefer not to because I'd rather have the thin set bond directly to the drywall than rather onto drywall mud. But if you already had it, you know, if you went all the way, that's not a big deal. I mean, you can still towel over it. I just prefer to have my thin set bond directly to the drywall. So we're just gonna do down to my Wayne's cutting couple inches down below it so I make sure I don't have any problems. And just remove all that excess. Do our nails, what I like to do is just get a pan full of mud and slide over it if my screws are sunk. Definitely check this before you do this. Make sure that the screws are totally sucked in. Okay, so just take a mud and just go over both screws at the same time. This kind of creates a better motion to be able to fill that in. And just do that on all the screws. Actually, you don't really have to worry about the ones below here because that's going to be where the wainscoting is. So I'm just doing the upper screws and the ceiling. And those are going to get covered by my trim from my window. And all of this will be covered by my tile work. If I just get that screw there. Okay, so I'll be having tile work coming up along here, but I still want to just mud this corner here because this is going to be, um, it's going to be tiled over, but I might have a little bit of extra space and I want to just make sure that this corner looks good. I'm not worried about where the tile is because the tile is going to meet tile to tile there. I just want to do the upper corners here and I'm not even worried about the ceiling either. It's just I have a feeling the way my tile work is, I'm gonna need a little bit of volume here in the corner. And you might see into that corner. So I'm gonna just tape it, ensure that that's finished. All right, so second coat. Uh, really, I just like to do a light sanding with a sanding sponge, just kind of get the crunchies off of it. And then you want to use two types of blades for your flat seams. So a 12 inch and a 16 inch usually does the best. And then we're going to do one side of the corners. So let's get into it. Um, so I'm going to do a little real light sanding, not taking much off, just kind of making sure that there's nothing going to interfere when I go to mud it. Jump up 
I'm gonna wear some stilts. Definitely not a necessity, but definitely kind of helpful rather than having to get on a ladder to move around. Okay, so just lightly sand this corner. So we're gonna take care of our corners first here. So again, just take a half trial of mud. And I like to do my ceilings first. You could do either side, but we're just gonna do one side of the corner, let it dry, and in our third coat, we'll do take care of the, the wall side. So just apply that. Have a fairly firm hand when you're removing the excess. Just don't be putting, I actually put a little bit more pressure on the outside of my trowel and let the inside kind of float. So that'll allow you to keep that corner nice and straight. If you have any crunchies here or any little, little overspray, don't worry about it. You know, if you try to go this way to remove that, you can put, possibly hit that corner and cause a problem. Tomorrow, it'll just sand right out. So just try to be, You know, the longer your strokes, and the, it's just kind of like painting in a sense, the longer your strokes, the better it is as far as getting a nice line. So even like that little bit there, don't worry about it. And then just put the pressure on the outside of your blade and just pull across. And then like anything like right, this little crease here, you can just sand it off tomorrow. You want to do one side of the corner on your walls as well. And we're just going to do this side because again, I think I'm going to need to buffer this corner out a little bit to get my towel work to work right. So I'm just going to mud this side of the wall. I'm going to go over your screws again. So kind of the same pattern with the gliding over both screws. These are 12 inch. So I, I cut the corners off here so that I can glide this mud and I don't get a bunch of stuff falling off. So then you just float this my 16 inch, just glide over the whole thing. Applying a fair amount of pressure. Yeah, there's stuff in my mud. All right, I'm just gonna leave that alone. There's a little couple streaks there, but I can touch it up with my third coat. Get a trowel full, cut the corners so you're not having it fall off of the ceiling. Sixteen inch. Put a fair amount of pressure on there. Just wipe it off. Got a couple of things in my mud, but I'm gonna leave it alone. Because the more I play around with it, the harder it'll be to make it nice but I must have something, some kind of chunks in here. Okay, so I'll take care of the second coat. 
tomorrow we can address some of these little uh, scratches we have in the main seams and then do our uh, other side of the corner. Okay, so quick tip, just when you're done with your mud, make sure you scrape it off and then be sure to wipe the inside of your bucket so that none of this joint compound dries and then get stuff in your mud. Especially when you're getting on the third coat, <laughs> you do not want anything in your mud or you're just gonna have to go back over anything that streaks. So make sure you clean the inside. Make sure you put on the lid. Okay, so third coat, we're gonna use my sanding block. We're gonna sand everything down and then just move on to that third coat. So really a sanding sponge is all really all you need. Um, and just try to be careful with it. You don't want to be exposing the tape. You just want to basically sand off anything that has a rough edge on it. And it really shouldn't be all that much. Hopefully if you used a 12 and a 14 inch knife on these main seams and the corners is where these little beveled uh, sponges really help out a lot. Okay, so third coat, there's really nothing more than coating it other side now. So I'll just go ahead and get our half trial mud, go right along the side, trying to put more pressure on the bottom part of your trowel than the actual corner. Pay attention to that corner. Yep, got something in my mud here. That's why you don't worry about too much about the streaks and stuff because it's real easy to cover up the next day. Rather than stress yourself out trying to get the perfect seam, you can just go over it the next day on the third coat. Not gonna waste any time. And you know, why frustrate yourself if you're not getting the perfect lines that you want? You know, mudding is one of those things where some days are good, some days. It just fights you so you know you have to know your strengths and know when to just move on with the project because maybe mudding isn't isn't your thing that day and you can move on the next day to, to make up for it but uh yeah touching this stuff up not a difficult thing to do and that's why it's one thing i always recommend when people you know are doing bathrooms to gut everything down to the, the studs because you really want to check out all that plumbing, electrical. You want to modify things to make sure that you can custom make it to the, your, your custom bathroom. It makes everything a lot easier if you get your plumbing in the right location. If you're, you know, reroute that outlet for your vanity and you put it in the place that you want it, all of that customization is going to be well worth it. And really to take all these walls down, is really not that big of a deal. Um, you know, we got basically six sheets of drywall in here and uh, to finish it, you know, it just takes a little bit of time. But, you know, even if you have never done this before, it's just going to take a bunch of different coats to get it to the finish that you want. But it's all, um, you know, it's all able to be achieved by, you know, anybody who's never even touched this stuff before. 
Uh, and it's just because it's, you know, it's just a matter of applying the mud, sanding it down, and then getting it to that finish that you want it, to, you, that you want it at. Okay, so same thing on the flat seams. Third coat is just a matter of just kind of taking all the mud off of it, just touching up some spaces that you might have not been able to get good the day before. That's why it's not worth fighting. Um, you know, if you're not getting good lines or you got something in your mud, you know, just kind of move on with the project because it's not that hard to come here the next day and just add a little bit more mud over those imperfections. You know, I mean, obviously perfection is something to achieve, uh, but it takes time to get there. And, you know, with stuff like this every day, you can just add a little bit more, make it perfect. So you might not be able to get there where you can just do it, you know, the first time and everything's great, but you know, over time you'll learn those skills and uh, you know, basically just don't stress the small stuff. Get, uh, move on with the rest of your project. Don't feel defeated just because you can't, you know, just cause you had a bad day with the mud. You know, mud is one of those things where, you know, you have your good days and bad days and uh, it's really, a, it requires a steady hand. So, you know, something like around this outlet, real kind of a pain in the neck, it's gonna take me probably another coat to get this the way I want it to look just because, you know, I don't have a lot of room here to work with. So sanding drywall, not a big deal. Covering up your mistakes, not a big deal either. Okay, so we'll do a final sanding and we'll get priming and painting our ceiling. So hopefully at this point, you just have a little bit of touch-ups and or you already had taken care of that. And now you just have to lightly sand it, wipe down the walls and go ahead and paint. Okay, so before you go painting, it's a good idea to take a damp sponge and just wipe down your ceiling, get all those dust balls off of there, because otherwise you'll get that mixing in with the paint and get little dust balls on the, on the ceiling or the wall. So wipe them all off and then you can go ahead and start priming. Okay, so we're just going to be doing just where the area is that we're going to be painting with the primer because it doesn't really matter if you have it below for the tile since I'm going to have the thin set going directly to the drywall so there's no reason to prime everything so I'm just going to do just where I'm going to be painting. 